Isi Sagwa, or Sagwa Isi, born on the 26th of April 1941 and died on the 24th of November 2022. Also known as Pang or the Corp Cannibal, was a Japanese lost murderer and cannibal known for the killing of Reni in Paris in 1981. Sagawa murdered Reni and then mutilated, cannibalized and performed a ritual on her corpse over several days. When police arrived at Sagawa's apartment, they found pieces of a female body in his refrigerator. Sagawa confessed to the crime and revealed his history of mental illness. Consequently, the judge that deemed Sagawa legally insane and unfit to stand trial. Sagawa was sentenced to indefinite incarceration. However, due to a public outrage, Sagawa was deported back to Japan. Once he arrived in Japan, he was immediately taken to a hospital. There, psychologists examined him and unanimously concluded that he was sane but evil. Sagawa was released unconditionally due to the applicable laws and the ways his case was processed in the court of France and Japan. After his release, he became a minor celebrity in Japan and made a living through public interest in his crime. E.C. Sagawa was born on the 26th of April 1949. To a wealthy parent, Sagawa's father, Akira Sagawa, was a businessman who had served as president of Kurita Water Industries and his grandfather had been an editor for the Asahi Shumbun. Sagawa was born prematurely and reportedly was small enough that he could fit in the palm of his father's hand. He immediately developed enteritis, a disease of the small intestine. Sagawa eventually recovered after several injections. Sagawa's fragile health and introverted personality led to him developing a strong interest in literature. Sagawa first experienced cannibalistic desire while in the first grade after seeing a male sty. In a 2011 interview with Vice, Sagawa reported that as a youth, he committed bestiality on his dog and experienced a cannibalistic desire for women. Sagawa attended Wako University and completed a master's degree in English literature. At the age of 24, while attending Wako University in Tokyo, Sagawa followed a tall German woman home, then broke into her apartment while she was sleeping. Sagawa's intention was to cannibalize by slicing off parts of her buttocks and sneaking away with a small part of her flesh. But she woke up and according to Sagawa, thwart his attack and pushed him to the ground. Sagawa was captured by police and charged with attempted rape and did not confess his true intention to authorities. Sagawa's charges of attempted rape were dropped when his father paid the settlement to the victim. In 1977, at the age of 28, Sagawa moved to France to pursue a PhD in literature in Paris. Sagawa has said that while residing in Paris almost every night, I would bring a prostitute home and then try to shoot them. But for some reason, my fingers froze up and I couldn't pull the trigger. On June the 11th of 1981, Sagawa, then 32, invited his classmate Rini, a Dutch woman, to a dinner at his apartment. Under the pretext of translating poetry for a school assignment, Sagawa planned to kill and eat her. Having selected her for her health and beauty, some of the characteristics that he felt he lacked, Sagawa considered himself weak, ugly and small. He was 145 cm, that is 4 feet and 9 inch tall, and claimed that he wanted to absorb her energy. She was 25 years old and 178 cm, 5 feet and 10 inch. After Reni arrived, she began reading poetry at a desk with her back to Sagawa when he shot her in the neck with a rifle. Sagawa said he fainted after the shock of shooting her but awoke with the realization that he had to carry out his plan. Sagawa raped her corpse but he could not beat into her skin because his teeth were not sharp enough. So he left the apartment and purchased a butcher knife. Sagawa consumed various parts of Reni's body, eating most of her breasts, face, buttocks, feet, thighs, and neck, either raw or cooked. Even admitting 
that he swallowed her clitoris whole due to her being on her period at the time and him not liking the smell of mesral blood while saving other body parts in his refrigerator. Sagawa also took photographs of Reni's body at each eating stage. Once the remains of her body that he did not consume started decomposing, Sagawa attempted to dump the remains of the corpse in a lake park, carrying her dismembered body parts in two suitcases, but was caught in the act and arrested by French police four days later. Sagawa's wealthy father provided a lawyer for his defense, and after being held for two years awaiting trial, Sagawa was found legally insane and unfit to stand trial by the French judge, Jean Louis, who ordered him held indefinitely in a mental institution. Sagawa's account of the murder and its aftermath were published in Japan under the title In the Fog. Sagawa's subsequent publicity and celebrity likely contributed to the French authorities' decision to deport him to Japan, where he was immediately committed to a hospital in Tokyo. His examining psychologists all declared him sane and found sexual perversion was his sole motivation for the murder. As the charges against Sagawa in France had been dropped, the French court documents were sealed and were not released to Japanese authorities. Subsequently, Sagawa could not legally be detained in Japan. Sagawa checked himself out of hospital on the 12th of August of 1986 and subsequently remained free until his death. Sagawa's continued freedom was widely criticized around the world. Between 1986 and 1997, Sagawa was frequently invited to be a guest speaker and commentator. In 1992, Sagawa appeared in Sato's exploitation film, Unfaithful Wife, Shameful Torture. As a Sado sexual voyage, Sagawa wrote a book about the murder he committed, as well as Sean A., a book on the 1997 Kobe child murders. Sagawa also wrote a restaurant reviews for the Japanese magazine SPA. Sagawa could no longer find publishers for his writing and he struggled to find employment. Sagawa was nearly accepted by a French language school because the manager was impressed by his courage in using his real name but employees protested and he was rejected. In 2005, Sagawa's parents died and he was prevented from attending their funeral or repaid their creditors and moved into public housing. Sagawa received welfare benefits for a time. In an interview with Vice magazine in 2011, Sagawa said that being forced to make a living while being known as a murderer and cannibal was terrible punishment. In 2013, Sagawa was hospitalized from an infraction which permanently damaged his nerve system. He later lived alone and needed daily assistance, which was provided by his younger brother or from caregivers. At the time, he claimed to have regretted the obsession. He died from complication of pneumonia at a hospital in Tokyo on the 24th of November 2022 at the age of 73. Thank you once again for watching this very video on Frank Speaks. Remember to like and subscribe to this very YouTube channel and also hit the notification bell for subsequent contents coming through. Do well as well to preach the gospel of Frank Speaks to your friends by sharing this video and other videos on this channel.